Hello everyone, this is Satyam and in this video we will be discussing a very popular maximum sums of array problem. So uh, the problem statement goes like this, you are given an array and you are supposed to find the sub array that has maximum sum amongst all the sub arrays possible and return the sum value. So um, please note that we can only have contiguous elements in the sub array. So for example, choosing this first three elements would give you a sub array, choosing this second to a uh, second last element would give you an sub array but uh, choosing this first and third and fifth would not give you a sub array so let's begin with the brute force solution first so in the brute force solution you uh, iterate over all the possible sub arrays and uh, com compare their sums and return the maximum sum value so what I mean by this is you would start from the first element, go to second element, go till third element, go to fourth and in that same way till the end of the array and compare all their sums. Uh, in the next iteration, you would begin from the second element and then you would go to the third element, fourth element up to the end of the array and you would do the same starting from third then fourth uh, till the end of the array. But this is quite simple to code actually, but the problem here is that the complexity is big of n square, where n is the size of the array. In idea behind cadence algorithm is that you should be able to find the maximum sum of sub arrays ending at any particular chosen element in the array. So for example, let's say I chose this minus two, then I should be able to find the maximum among all the sub arrays that end at minus two. So the trivial case would be if I choose null sub array another one would be when i choose minus two another sub array that ends at minus two is choosing the th second and third element and the final one is when i choose the first second and third elements so i should be able to find the maximum among all these sub array smartly so let's see how we can compute the maximum among all the sub arrays ending at any particular element so we can group all the sub arrays into two groups. The trivial case in which we do not choose any element is the first group. And the sum is also trivial, which is zero in this scenario. And for the rest of the scenarios, we can use a dynamic programming approach to efficiently compute the uh, maximum sum ending at this particular element minus two. So, so let's say the Maximum among all the values uh, in the sub arrays ending at the current element is current sum. And we have previously computed the maximum among all the sub arrays ending at one element left to the current element. So maximum among all the sub arrays possible by choosing only this uh, two elements and ending at three is stored in some variable previous sum. So if you carefully look at uh, the three sub arrays at the bottom, uh, you can see that you are going to choose minus two in all of them since you want the sub arrays that end at minus two. But uh, you have a choice regarding which of the elements you choose from the previous sum. So if my previous sum already has the maximum among all the sub arrays ending at three, then I can use this to compute my current sum. So for the uh, second group, which contains these three uh, sub arrays, the current sum is easy to compute, which would be previous sum, and we'd add the current element to it. But uh, for uh, in order to include the scenario when we do not choose the last element, uh, we'd have to consider it as a maximum of zero with the previous sum plus a of i. Uh, this is how we can compute the maximum among all the sub arrays ending at this particular element minus two. Uh, this is entirely the main crux behind the cadence algorithm. Uh, now, please note that we can use this current sum while we compute uh, the current sum for the next element. So uh, this current sum could be treated as previous sum uh, when we actually compute the current sum for this three and uh, if we do the same thing 
uh, for all the elements scanning the array from left to right and compare all the current sum values and take the maximum of these current sum values then uh, we'd actually get the required answer for the maximum sub sum sub array uh, in this whole array uh, we can do this by keeping a track of maximum among current sum in another variable let's say uh, named max sum now let's quickly dive into the code and see how we really implement this in c i have this function max sum sub array value that takes a vector as input and returns the maximum sum among all the sub arrays so yeah the first line just takes the size of the vector which is essentially the number of elements present in the vector uh, for current sum we start it with zero uh, because uh, initially at the leftmost end we do not have any element and we assume uh, that sum to be zero for best sum we also start the initialization with zero and this is the uh, line in which you might have seen this current sum written as previous sum but since we initialized it with zero for the first element it works out just fine and whenever we start traversing the array towards right the previous current sum is stored in this same value current sum and current sum keeps on getting updated so we can get rid of the extra variable so this is essentially same as uh, writing current sum as max of previous sum plus a i comma zero as you might have seen uh, in the previous part of the video and yeah this best sum keeps on tracking all the current sum and returns the maximum among them and finally we turn the best sum now there's a variation to this problem in which you are not allowed to return empty sub array so let's say you have uh, only negative numbers negative integers as an input array or vector so uh, in that case this function that we have written would return zero as the base sum value uh, this is considering that uh, your sub array could be empty but if you are in the interview and the problem is such that you need to have at least one element in the sub array then how will you proceed the fix is quite easy actually uh, if you want you can think on your own but i'll just write it down here so if your best sum is equal to zero now uh, this can mean only two of the things uh, one of them is that you have got an empty array as an input and in that case uh, it doesn't make sense to actually include a single element and so i'll also add that into the condition and the other other possible uh, cases when you have only negative elements as I mentioned in this comment so in that scenario if you have got to choose at least one element uh, then you should uh, update your base sum with the maximum element present in the array because that is the best we can do if we have only negative elements present in our vector so for this particular example we return minus 3 because that's the best we can do if we have got to choose at least one element please notice that whenever i have at least a single positive element in my array then my best sum would never be zero this is because my best sum would be at least that positive value or more than that if there are more possible values present so the time complexity for this code is big of n because you traverse the array in lines 10 to 14 and if you are supposed to calculate the maximum element then you would traverse it again but yeah the complexity would still be big of n and since we are not using any extra space so the space complexity is big of one we are just declaring some variables here and there now you can find the link to the code in the description box if you like this video don't forget to hit the like button share it with your friends and share your comments and feedbacks in the comment section Please subscribe to the channel to keep watching more such content and see you in the next video. Till then, bye-bye.